Hi, I'm James Glass, and this is a short video on a couple of important things to note about panels, particularly sub-panels in this case. Um, today I'm actually finishing off the drywall in my little um, home shop where I uh, work sometimes because I babysit Simon, my 17-month-old. Linda and I haven't done daycare, so I do a lot of work from home. And the drywall that I'm finishing today, it's a close-up of it, um, ties in with the sub-panel work. You'll all, by the way, just as a side note, you'll notice that this is not sanded. This drywall uh, is 5 8 inch fire rated X. It didn't have to be. I just wanted it for acoustic control. But this is joint compound I just put down. And if it looks pretty smooth, it's because I hate sanding and so I've learned to apply it in such a way that I really don't have to sand very much. Ultimately, I'll do a level 5 finish in here. Um, so there'll be no tool marks or, or anything, but uh, yeah, a little side note there. Uh, if you wipe it right, uh, you don't have to mess with it. So, how does drywall finishing tie in with panels and um, other devices like single gang or triple gang boxes. Well, here's how it ties in. NEC doesn't allow anything more than an eighth of an inch gap between a box and the finished wall. And it's ultimately the electrician's responsibility to address that gap. Um, over here, here's a single gang box. And you'll notice this is something that I had done the other day. This was a quarter of an inch, and this was about an eighth of an inch. It's been filled in. What I do first is I'll actually put in a little bit of caulk behind this, and then a quarter to three-eighths inch, 45-minute uh, dry joint compound, which is a lot stronger than the skim coat, skim coat stuff in the bucket. And the, uh, the nice thing about the, the caulk behind it is it forms an airtight seal, and it offers some flexibility so that um, with expansion and contraction, this repair doesn't pop out. I've had really good success with this caulk um, joint compound method. So, you can, if I get in here, hopefully this camera, this point shoot camera will see that. You can see there is a little more than an eighth of an inch, about a 3 16 inch gap on this side. And I have filled it. And that meets NEC requirements. While we're here, let's talk about a couple of other quick things on subpanels. Um, I see improperly bonded subpanels all the time. This is a 60 amp square D um, uh, Q series uh, subpanel. And this is coming off of a main panel being fed by a 60 amp breaker. And I often see these subpanels bonded. That is to say, the neutral will return, which is these white wires, and these ground wires are connected on the same bus. That's completely wrong. In a subpanel, uh, the ground has to be maintained separately. So when you purchase this load center, the 60 amp load center, you do not get this little ground bar. You have to buy that separately and mount it in the, in the box. And then you can connect all of your grounds here. And the only time that the neutral return, which is, in, which is a grounded conductor, and the ground actually meet is in the main panel, whatever that might be. This, the, maybe the main disconnect uh, next to the meter or possibly the main panel um, in the house if it's three-wire service, four-wire service, or whatever. But in all sub-panels, the ground system and the neutral return absolutely, categorically, do not get mixed. One final note on panels. You'll notice the panel's about four feet off the ground the top of it. That's fine. The important thing is that the minimum height, the top of the highest breaker for the main, in the main case, or the top of the breakers right here, not be more than six feet, seven inches off the ground, so that a person of typical height can reach the main and turn it off. The other note is um, the ceiling, you'll notice this is a little bit shorter ceilings in here. It's about seven and a half feet on that end. It's about six and a half feet on that end. The minimum height requirement for any panel, sub 
panel or main panel is six and a half feet, which we have here. So if you have a wall or a space, like a crawl space or whatever, cannot put a panel um, in an area where there isn't at least six and a half feet from the floor to the ceiling. So there's a couple of really common errors I see all the time with panels. I, I see uh, no one ever comes to check to make sure there's more than an eighth of an inch gap. I see the neutral and ground all co-mingled and tied up together. And then I see panels in areas that don't maintain the minimum maximum height for the panel box, the minimum height for ceiling. I see these are probably the most common mistakes that I see. But the main point today um, is you got to finish off those areas around panels and around boxes. And you can see here, there's another single gang box, all nice and tight. And you can't leave it all sloppy. The fact that the plate covers it is not enough. Thanks for watching.